two sports and then Sorry, I'm just leaving the Algonquin tribe. All right. So what we'll see with Cortez and the Aztec is pretty common of the early conquistadors, right? Take no prisoners, you can take slaves, uh, but really, if the Native American people opposed Spanish settlement, that they were going to be destroyed in the process. Uh, what was the one difference between slavery and encomienda? Do you remember what the difference between slavery and encomienda is? Uh, you had to, you had to uh, baptize, right, your, your slaves and Christianize them. That, so when we're dealing with the debate, or when we're dealing with the discussion about uh, Europeans were having over uh, what to do with the Native American people, what was the general consensus? What was the general attitude of Europeans, especially Spaniards? What's the general attitude? It's okay to take as many as you want as slaves. It's okay to take them as slaves as long as you Christianize them, right? Was there anybody that spoke against this? Las Casas. Las Casas. See how, okay. So now, rather than me saying Las Casas is important, I think in the approach that we've taken, you guys through reading and stuff, you can see that those names are valuable. And so um, the world in general respond with a big shrug towards Native American people, but there are voices like Las Casas that, that believe that the treatment was unfair. 90% of Native American people are going to be wiped out during the age of Spanish discovery. What were the Spaniards looking for? Gold. Gold, silver, precious metals. Eventually, they're going to basically collect all of that from the New World. But what keeps them there is not gold. It's going to be a agricultural good. What is more precious than gold? Sugar. Sugar. Okay. And so plantation farming, like the Portuguese had started in on the west coast of Africa, is going to spread into the New World. It's tropical, and there's a labor force available. But as Native American people die from smallpox, uh, that labor force is replaced with African uh, slaves. And we will get into that at a later time, but I just wanted to point out the gold trade is slowly replaced with the sugar trade. Native American labor is slowly replaced with African labor in the Caribbean, okay? So I know that's one of the essential questions that uh, we had. If we just focus on the death, destruction of the Indies, the mistreatment of the Native Americans, we get a really dark picture. And this is not to minimize that what is amount, what amounts to genocide. But at the same time, a whole new culture, a whole new system develops in this area where uh, Europe and Native peoples are interacting. And if you have Latino ancestors, if you have Latino heritage, if you are familiar with Latin America, that is distinctly different from Spain. And so we have to look at how the black legend is not the full story. And the black legend is this painting, this really dark, uh, morbid picture of, of the destruction of the Indies and forgetting the fact that a whole new people springs out Okay, Latinos. Okay, and so the focus of this is going to be on how expansive the Spanish Empire was and how that eventually evolved into modern day Latin America. Now we're in American history. Latin American history is part of that, but we can go too far. Like, uh, we are probably not going to be asked questions about South American history. And so good for us, we can jump, we can stay north of we can stay north of uh, Colombia, okay? Um, over the next hundred years after Columbus, Spain is going to control basically all of Central America, what today is modern Colombia, and up into New Mexico, Arizona, southern part of Colorado, they're going to dub Mexico Nueva, or New Mexico, right? The capital of Mexico Nueva, Santa Fe. And I'll talk a little bit about the history there, but what Native American group did we discover is central to New Mexico? 
They live in the adobes. Yeah, so keep that in mind as we go into that. But the Spanish, over the next hundred years after Columbus, not just aim to colonize this, because in the days of colonization, oftentimes you just planted a flag and said it was yours. But they aim to militarize it. They want to fortify it. Okay. Why would a country create military forts? What? They wanted to keep everybody out. Keep control to defend against enemies. Well, who are the enemies? We've already talked a little bit about how Native American people, their culture was not especially welcome. But in the hundred years after Columbus, a couple of other countries get the impression that North America could be lucrative. And we talked how Mexico was, or excuse me, Spain was sort of the Elon Musk of New World Adventure, right? They were out there first. But just like every first, there's going to be a second and a third and a fourth. England and France begin to look into North America. And so I want to point out a couple of explorers you've heard of, or perhaps that mark the, the involvement of other countries at this time where Spain is trying to control its territory in the New World, because that's going to be important to understanding why they fortified New Mexico. Okay? John Cabot is the name that you're probably most familiar with, the first person sailing for England to go off the coast of Canada. His real name was uh, Giovanni Caboto, right? Very Italian. Keep in mind, Italy was not a, na a powerful nation at this time. So guys like Cabot and Columbus, they had to go find countries that were willing to take a gamble. So John Cabot goes and sails for England off the coast of, uh, of Canada. Gio, uh, Giovanni de Veranzo uh, sailed for France, and they're going to go and find places like the St. Lawrence River, the Great Lakes, and eventually, probably one of the most uh, important figures from France, Jacques Cartier, is going to sail all the way down the St. Lawrence River to the Great Lakes and sees that there's like this interstate highway of water that can connect, travel through um, travel through North America. This puts Spain on alert. And so Spain wants to fortify its boundaries, right? The fact that the French are exploring the Mississippi River, uh, the fact that the English are considering territory off of the, off the east coast of the Atlantic. So Spain starts building forts, but we're not going to call them forts. We're going to call them, um, oh gosh, Mind, mind blank, uh, missionaries, right? Missionaries. Places like San, Di San, Di uh, San Diego, Los Angeles, Santa Fe. They're fortifications, but at the same time, they are Christian missionaries. And so uh, going into these territories, they would claim the, the land for Spain and for God and for the Catholic Church and anyone that opposed them was taken care of. The biggest problem in New Mexico for the Spanish is going to be the Pueblo. You should read a little bit about the Battle of Acama. Okay, with the Battle of Acama, we have a, the last of the conquistadors in North America, a guy by the name of Juan de Añante. Now, you don't need to probably remember Juan de Añante's name or how to even say it, but here's the thing. His treatment of the Indians falls right along the line of how the Spaniards had been treating the Indians up until this point. He takes in, he goes into uh, a Mesa village. Okay, Acama is a city. It's 1,200 years old. It's on top of a it's on top of a Mesa. They go into the city and they burn it down. They they capture all the women and the children and any men that fight and resist. They kill them. Those men that lay their weapons down and surrender are branded as traitors to Spain. They're, they have one foot cut off and are sold into slavery for 20 years. Okay, destruction, right? No, no cooperation or no kind of uh, protection for those people. They have to submit or be destroyed. Okay, 
Now, the reason I'm telling you that, that sounds like pretty much all of European history is violent and pretty unrelenting. But the role of the Catholic missionaries, oh, I forgot to mention, they take the kids away from their parents and they put them into the missionaries to grow up as, as Catholic children. So they don't, so they lose their native ways, right? The whole point is through uh, cultural genocide to wipe out the Native American people. That's the beginning of the 17th century, 1600s. Here's Akama, 1200 year old village on top of a mesa. It's the, the remnants are still there today. You get a sense for where that is. Akama right here, south of modern day Santa Fe. We can see here Juan de Añantes uh, traverses up into what today is modern New Mexico. And eventually other uh, Spanish conquistadors are going to go wander out here in Oklahoma and Kansas uh, looking for gold. But the settlement of these Catholic missions, especially at the beginning, is to militantly remove Native American cultures, okay? It's zero tolerance, and usually when we think about, the, about genocide, what group of people do we think about? What group of Europeans tried to commit genocide and wipe out a whole religious group of people? What? The Germans, yeah, the Nazis, right? So there's zero tolerance from the Spaniards up until the beginning of the 17th century. Notice how I'm emphasizing change, okay? The change, eventually this changes. When we get into the 18th century, so now we're 200 years into Spanish settlement in North America, look at how time flies. Spain is no longer the empire that it once was. France and Britain are on the rise. And by the beginning of the 17th century, uh, Spain is facing all kinds of headaches and can't afford to keep its empire safe and secure the way that it used to in North America. How do we know this? Well, a Native American leader, a religious leader by the name of Pope, leads an uprising of the Pueblo. They take revenge on what had happened 200 years earlier, or 100 years earlier in uh, Akama. So 2,000 uh, Pueblo Indians ride into Santa Fe, they kill off 800 Spanish col uh, colonials, women, children, men, chase the Spanish army out of Santa Fe, and they begin a series of burning down Spanish missionaries, burning down the church, and building on top of them their own religious institutions. Okay, um, This is known as Pope's Rebellion. And here's, for those of you that love military history, there's some bad news for you. We get better and better at killing one another, but war is war. Death and dying and destruction seems to be part of all of human history. We're going to stop and pause and look at military history when it actually makes a difference to what comes next. So in this case, it does make a difference because what comes next is a change. If nothing changed, we wouldn't be talking about it. So the Battle of, or Pope's Rebellion is going to change the tune of the Spanish, okay? The Pueblo, their rebellion does not last. It doesn't end in elimination of the Spanish from New Mexico. They'll be back, but the Spanish will be more tolerant of native people. So from Columbus to Pope, the Spanish empire decimates the Native American population. After Pope, we start to see the Spanish Empire embrace Native Americans, intermarry Native Americans, develops this whole new culture of people we call mestizos. Okay, mestizos are uh, born in North America. They have parents of both Spanish and Indian background. If you can think of your average Latino person, you can picture their skin color. You can picture their heritage, most likely Catholic. Okay? Here's a picture from inside the U.S. Capitol building. In every state gets two statues in Washington, D.C., New Mexico. Their statue is Pope. All right. So, Mr. Lamberty has gone. Thanks for making me look good. I didn't even know he was in here. No. Yeah, he was. Yeah, what's the very good news that you're going to tell us? 
No test oh, tomorrow. Yes. What's, what was the neutral news? The neutral news is we want to continue pushing on chapter two and three. I actually just gone to sleep. That's more on the to keep. <laughs>